All right, we have the uh, Tenma hooked up to a uh, signal generator right now. And this signal generator is pumping out a triangle wave, and it's pumping it out at a 10 hertz signal rate. And uh, we are set right now in the 0.1 second per division range setting. And what we are seeing is a uh, slowly moving trace across the screen, uh, quickly varying in the vertical, but we see it, we see the points landing on every division line. And uh, that should be the case, it is the case. So we are 0.1 seconds per division. We see one full cycle per division, and that means we're running 10 hertz. Uh, if we go to 50 milliseconds per division, we're going to wind up with five peaks. If we go to 20, we see two. If we go to 10, we see that we start exactly on the, on the line here and make one full cycle, come back onto the line again. Uh, that's 10 milliseconds per division. We have 10 divisions. That's 100 milliseconds. 100 milliseconds is, um, is 10 hertz. As it's 10 hertz has a period of 100 milliseconds. Okay, and then we will kick up our uh, signal generator. And we see that we're at 100 hertz. And uh, we have one full cycle per division. We have 10 cycles across the screen. We're still in the 10 millisecond uh, uh, per division uh, range setting. So... Uh, We're running uh, 100 hertz right now. If I go to 5 milliseconds per division, we see the 5 peaks again. 2 milliseconds, we see 2 peaks, 2 full cycles. 1. Let's adjust our uh, trigger level a little bit so it's easier to see it. We see that we cross the axis here, make a peak, cross the axis, make a peak, come back up to the axis, one full cycle in one millisecond. In ten, excuse me. One millisecond per division, 10 divisions, 10 milliseconds, one full cycle. That's uh, 100 hertz. If I raise my uh, generator up a decade, yeah, close enough. Then uh, we see that we have 10 peaks, one, one cycle per division. Uh, we're one cycle per division, and we're one millisecond per division. We're running 1,000 hertz. I can go to uh, 0.5 milliseconds per division. We get five peaks. 0.2, we get two peaks. 0.1, we get one full cycle. So if we get 0.1... Uh, seconds per division, milliseconds per division, times 10, it's 10, uh, that would be one millisecond total. So we get one cycle in one millisecond, we're running a thousand cycles a second. Okay, we kick up our uh, range again. We are now measuring 10 kilohertz, uh, give or take a few, I'll try and trim off a little bit. There we go. 10.008. We see that uh, we are on the 0.1 millisecond per division range and we got one cycle per division. So we are, um, uh, each cycle represents 0.1 milliseconds. So we are running uh, 10 kilohertz. If I go to 50 microseconds per division, I get five peaks. 20 microseconds per division, I get 2. 10 microseconds per division times 10 divisions, 100 microseconds. And I see I'm doing one full cycle in that period. So I got one full cycle in 100 microseconds, <coughs> which is 0.1 milliseconds. That's 10 kilohertz. Let's go ahead and kick ourselves up another range. Decade range here. And... We want to read uh, 100 up here. Close 
close enough. We are on the 10 milliseconds per division. We got one full cycle per division. Uh, one full cycle in 10, milli 10 microseconds. One full cycle in 10 microseconds. Uh, so we are running uh, 100 kilohertz. That would be uh, correct. We go to 5 microseconds per division. That's 5 peaks. 2 microseconds per division. That's 2 peaks. One microsecond per division. In ten divisions, we get a full cycle, so we uh, we're running a hundred kilohertz because we're ten times longer than a mega cycle. Mega cycle would give us a peak in every uh, in every division. If I go to 0.5, well, we we have to kick up our range again, don't we? All right. And I want uh, mega cycle here. Very close. All right, one mega cycle, point eight, one point zero 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 eight mega cycles, and. Uh, I go back here again we see that we have uh, this is on the one microsecond per division so we have a peak in every division at one micro one one megahertz we're getting one microsecond per division so that's right we get five peaks in the 0.5 microsecond per division and we get um, two peaks in the 0.2 and uh, then we go to the XY capability and we get a Lissajou figure. This is a Lissajou figure for the triangle waves where both, uh, both inputs are equal in frequency and the uh, triangle waves. Our XY capability is working. We can adjust the uh, positioning by uh, adjusting the vertical channel 1 position control or channel 2 for the horizontal. And uh, that's working fine. Let's go ahead and get ourselves back up. Now, we've gone through all of the ranges, and uh, the point is we used a triangle wave. A lot of you might be wondering why I didn't use a sine wave, which is more traditional. Well, the, the thing is, if I used a sine wave and I asked you, did this scope represent that sine wave accurately, you truly wouldn't be able to answer it. Looking at it visibly, I don't think you could you could tell me that that was an accurate representation of a sine wave. However, <clears throat> when you're drawing straight lines, it's pretty easy to see. We're drawing straight lines here to make triangles. If I'm drawing a straight line and uh, and I'm doing it in the proper frequency domain, and it, now the question is, am I doing it in the proper amplitude? We'll check that out in a minute. But if my amplitude scale is correct, and I now know my, my time base scale is correct, and I'm drawing an accurate figure, then this scope is faithfully reproducing the signals that are coming in. That's, that's the point. So uh, time base has been tested. Let's move on to the vertical.